After a two-week hockey hiatus, the boys have sharpened their skates and taped the sticks back up for the final two games before the Christmas break. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Frank Southern Ice Arena, the home of the Club Ice Hockey at Indiana University. I'm Sam Wexler alongside Garrett Drake and our cameraman and tech extraordinaire, Ben Standard. Indiana enters this weekend, the final one before the break, with a 10-5-0 record and are sporting a six-game win streak, Garrett, that has carried them all the way here with a whole lot of momentum. They've been playing great hockey as of late, Sam, and we've gotten the, ch the opportunity to follow this team from the beginning of the year, and we've really seen the growth and camaraderie really come together. The boys love hanging out outside the ice. Uh, they were at the bowling alley at the IMU yesterday, getting some strikes on there, so um, I think they'll be looking forward to trying to get this win streak up to eight and going into the long break with some momentum. On the other side of the sheet, it'll be the St. Louis Billikens from the St. Louis University at a 5-12-0 mark and are 5-9 and nine in the MACHL. Indiana on the other side, 7-3-0 in the Tri-State Collegiate Hockey League and have moved up to second just behind the big and tough Miami Redhawks. St. Louis will have their premier netminder in the cage tonight. It's Sean Hockenberry, the senior from Lockport, Illinois. Saves about 87% of the shots he sees and has a goals allowed average of four and a quarter. For Indiana, though, there's going to be a change in between the pipes. Sammy Billis now has a broken hand resulting from practice last night, and so it'll be Brendan McCaskey, the sophomore from New Jersey, stepping in to fill his place. We've seen a little bit from Brendan McCaskey. He started against Louisville, and he did a great job. He's 1-0 on the season, got the victory, and we'll look. he's going to look to keep his undefeated mark as it's his second start today. His goals allowed average might be 5.00, Although when you do get the win in a big rivalry game like the Indiana-Louisville games, those are big wins and a big momentum push for your boys. Yeah, there were some garbage time goals scored in that game as well. And one other thing to look out for for this matchup is St. Louis has been productive on the power play in limited time, but Indiana's really going to have to put in the effort to stay out of the box and make sure they don't give the Billikens power play opportunities because that's when they're at their best. And we do have to clarify that we're going by the numbers we see online. We could not find the power play stats for some games. We only have eight games with shots on goal and power play stats reported. So we're making do with what we can, Garrett. On the other side of the ice, as we mentioned, Sean Hockenberry. Nine games played, he's got a 3-6-0 record and has a goals allowed of 425, saving about 31 shots per game. And that's partly due to the fact that the Billikens allow 40 shots against on average. And when you allow that many shots, you're going to get some that squeak past. Yeah, I was just about to mention the volume of shots that he's faced, as you touched on. But with an 86.9 save percentage, that's pretty good for the amount of shots that he sees on a nightly basis. So Indiana's going to have to look to continue to get that number up. We saw them get 70 shots in a game earlier this season against Xavier. So... If they could get half of that, it'll be a good night tonight. Indiana averaging 42 shots per game, shots on goal per game, rather, and allowing 32. So a big separation between Indiana and the Billikens of St. Louis as far as shooting goes. Now looking at the starting lineups for both sides, let's take a look at the starters for St. Louis. As we mentioned, Sean Hockenberry will be in goal for St. Louis, and then on defense it's going to be Avery Riva along with Peter Trainer, Nick Corker, Patrick Waterman, and Travis Herrick will be the forwards for the Billikens. And for the Cream and Crimson of Indiana University, McCaskey in the cage, Kyle Brennan and Griffin Timmons on D, Vladislav Krush, Jack O'Flaherty, and Cade Kenyon will round out the order as the forwards. Taking a look at the statistical comparisons between the two teams, Indiana averaging 4.3 goals per game and allowing 3.5 per game. They've really picked it up from where they were after the Miami Red Hawks series and the Ohio State game that got condensed from a two-game series to a one-game scramble. Yeah, their average got boosted a little bit. There are some outlier games there. They scored seven in a game against Kentucky, uh, 11 goals in two games against the Wildcats as well, and they had a 10-goal game earlier in the year, so... That average of 4.27 goals for is looking pretty nice right now for Indiana. They've won six in a row, as we mentioned earlier, and that's really a big part of that. The longest streak of the season for the Billikens is a little bit negative. It's a seven-game losing streak that they had 
early in the season between the 1st of October and the 23rd of October. They lost several games, a pair to Lindenwood, a pair to Iowa, lost to Bradley, and then finally were able to grab a win by beating Illinois in the second game. And Indiana, we have some comparable teams. Bradley and Indiana played early on in the season. And Louisville played Indiana as well. The Billikens split the Louisville series and were swept by Bradley, whereas Indiana swept Louisville and split the games versus Bradley. So the upper hand in comparable teams goes to Indiana in this situation. Yeah, and when you're giving up over five goals per game, as St. Louis is, it's just tough to win hockey games. They're minus 43 on the season. The penalty kill is sitting at 60%. Indiana's PK is very good, so that 81.3% is a very good number, but 60 is definitely a little lower than where you would like it to be if you're St. Louis. Some injuries to note. We obviously mentioned Sammy Billis is going to be out. Another goaltender not in the list will be Nathan Cheney. He had an ankle injury he sustained in practice about a week ago. So he'll be inactive and a scratch as well. For the St. Louis Billikens, pregame we learned that it was a big fraternity event weekend for St. Louis. So they will be without the services of sophomore right winger Joey Grigluski, freshman center Joey Vitulli, and their leading goal scorer and point getter, Gus Heithouse. Heithouse, the freshman, had a hat trick in their last game against Maryville and leads the team with five power play goals. Yeah, both teams are undermanned coming into this one, but I think it's safe to say St. Louis definitely took a bigger hit with guys being out, so Indiana's going to have to take advantage of that, and we should be set to go here in about five minutes. Well, St. Louis coming off a pair of wins against Maryville, and Indiana, as we mentioned, a big-time six-game win streak heading into the final weekend before the holidays. We'll be back after the national anthem. This is Club Ice Hockey at Indiana University on the Indiana Hockey Broadcast Network.
Welcome back to the Frank here in Bloomington, Indiana for the St. Louis Billikens against the Cream and Crimson of Indiana University. We now take you ice level for the PA announcements of the starting lineups and our national anthem. Garrett Drake is over across the ice on the call. A beautiful rendition of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, by a professor from the Kelly School of Business. We're told that he was named the Professor of the Year at the Kelly School of Business, and we are very grateful to have him in the building. We'll try and get the name for this gentleman when we get a chance. Starting lineups once again for St. Louis. Waterman, Herrick, Corker, Riva, and Trainer For Indiana, as mentioned, it'll be O'Flaherty, Kenyon, and Krush alongside Griffin Timmons and the hometown boy Kyle Brennan out of St. Louis 
for Indiana. The Billikens in all royal blue from left to right. In the cages, Hockenberry. And the Cream and Crimson of Indiana University from right to left in their white sweaters with red bottoms. And McCaskey between the pipes. Sam Wexler alongside Garrett Drake here in the Frank for the final two games of the regular season before we head to a winter break. Taking the face off for the Cream and Crimson will be O'Flaherty. He hops in, but it's won by the Billikens. Pushing it forward is Trainer. St. Louis playing around with it in their own end. Played toward the near side, flicked across. That's Herrick. His pass gets intercepted, and then he gets batted against the near boards, scooped up and carried out of trouble by Reba. Then sent all the way across, and Ising waved off, so it's Herrick rushing in to make the play. Instead, emerging from behind his own cage is O'Flaherty. Throws it forward to Kenyon, who's in traffic, being harassed at the red line, and gets dispossessed. Here comes Timmons playing it on the near side, ships it off the boards, and across the red line, Krush laying chase. He pushes it all the way forward, and Indiana will get a change, as will the Billikens. Ten fresh skaters out on the ice. Simino saves it right at the blue line at the right point. Here comes a nice long shot off the stick of Will Kicker. Goes into traffic and swallowed up by the chest protector of Hockenberry. To, the, to stop the clock for the first time this evening. 19-11 to go here in period number one. And one thing to know, I know we talk about the Frank quite a bit this season, but we are on some slippery ice today. It is not freezing over very well, and there's a lot of standing water on the ice. As we mentioned during the pregame before the puck drop, we get you the name of that professor. It is Professor Dennis Spar. A quick shovel shot right in front of the net. Off the stick of Sosin goes wide. McCaskey seeing his first shot of the evening. Offenbach scoops up the puck and runs into the official on the far corner. Finally whisked away, toilet bowled around to the near side over to the stick of McDonald. He plays it forward high into the air and it's chopped out by Rubis. He gets dumped into the Indiana bench by a hard hitting and hard charging Goodfellow. Played now as the puck emerges from the Indiana zone. McDonald takes a cross check and keeps moving at the left dot. Tries to stick handle, swimming through traffic and push up against the cage in the trapezoid. Puck scooped away by Brandenburg, who lets Cesarski flick it away behind the Billikens cage. And now the puck is stuck on the netting, so we'll have a stoppage in play. 18 and a quarter to go here in the first. Shots on goal standing at one apiece, and the hits 1-0 in favor of Indiana after Goodfellow laid the body right in front of his own bench. Yeah, it was a big one. That's a good way to... Get your first hit of the game right there, no doubt about it. One big thing that helped Indiana against Xavier and Kentucky were the faceoffs. Offenbach, Brandenburg, and Kenyon all did really well at the dot, securing the possession any chance they got. A quick shot right from point blank range on the near side. Gets kicked up and nearly hits the disco ball, but it stays in play. Here's Di Lorenzo waiting to make a hit, and then he receives a hit instead. Billikens playing it away out of their own end, chased down by Timmons. He swings around at his own blue line. Indiana circling the wagons. Then a quick D to D pass, chipped forward off of Brandenburg's blade. Icing waved off, chasing it down as Trainer. Another big hit, and it's Michelli who sends Trainer down to his backside. Good fellow, lines up a shot through traffic, but it was a worm burner right down the middle. And hit off several different skate blades. Jeremy trying to play the hero in the far corner, dances around the right circle. And the puck wobbles free all the way over toward Ow, whose backhander goes all the way out of play. That one went way out of here. Almost up over the net. We've played 2 and 45 seconds. No score for either side. And Indiana has done well when they jump out and get the first goal of the game. Yeah, they've really been aggressive in the first period all season long. And today they're being extra physical, as you can see. You can tell. Thanksgiving break gave everybody's time or everybody's body time to recover and it's showing. Face off won by St. Louis in their own zone, but Indiana regains the line. Here's Kitchell charging forward and now laying a big hit as he tries to regain possession. Rugby scrum behind the cage and then pushed backhanded by Corker. Another deflection and neither side able to hem either one in the zone and get a sustained attack. Corker throws a wrist shot on from the near side, gliding into the right dot. Pushed away, and now Jeremy, Null, and Kissel will have an odd man rush. Three on two, poked away from Jeremy. He's dispossessed again, and the puck flicked all the way across. Icing waved off. Brennan moves away and tries to throw a shot on. Pardon me, 
flicking it forward. Now to Krush, who does have a chance. He stick handles around a defenseman, trying to go around in the left circle. That's Avery Riva making his legs and skate blades useful. Puck sent sky high into the rafters, and the 32-foot ceiling comes into play for Indiana as the Billikens are not used to seeing such a low ceiling. Yeah, it appears that they didn't really consider the playing conditions that they're in. The Frank with the low ceiling, it's tough to send pucks up in the air like that without getting a stoppage. Face off won by Indiana. Cesarski's wrist shot is paddled away by Hockenberry. Kenyon, one of the assistant captains, gets spun around on the trapezoid line, and the Billikens will have a rush of their own. Here comes Callahan, the younger brother, moving forward, and instead it's Krush in front of the St. Louis bench. We've played four full minutes here at the Frank in game one of this two-game series. Linesman has his hand up for icing, and it will be called as such. 15 and a quarter. Pardon me, 15.48 to go here in the first. McCaskey starting to get his legs loose. He hasn't played since the Louisville 6-5 to five win on the road at the Iceland Sports Complex. And he's looked sharp so far. Yeah, one thing we've figured out about this Indiana team is that players who have a period of time off, they're always ready to go once their number's called. And same thing with McCaskey. Rust versus rest. Indiana wins the faceoff in the attacking third. Another scrum ensues along the boards. Playing it forward is Joseph Callahan, the older one. He whacks at it again at the red line and it's pushed all the way across. Five fresh skaters for the Billikens as they get a change. Indiana will try to do the same. Pass pushed up off of McDonald's stick. He's got a run here at the goal line. Avoids a hit and still stays with the puck. Offenbach now gets tripped up in the corner. No call. Play continues. Emerging forward. It's off the stick of Trainer. Icing waved off. Goodfellow scoops up the damage. Chipped up off the boards into the neutral zone. Bodies collide. And Hockenberry is forced to move his paddle away and keep the puck. Again, another 200-foot pass as McCaskey tries to reach for it, but instead it's taken away by Penberthy. A big hit in the boards. We may have a boarding call, and now we've got some pushing and shoving after the whistle. McDonald getting into it with Penberthy as well as Turgelian, and slow to get up appears to be number 17, Jeffrey Au, another one of these St. Louis natives, slowly back onto his skates and shaking his head. It looked like he had a big collision in the corner. Yeah, he felt the brunt of Nathan Cesarski on that hit, and believe me, that is not a position you want to be in if you're an opposing player seeing skis coming at you full speed. Well, it is Cesarski, the captain for Indiana, heading to the box. He leads the team in penalty infraction minutes. He's got 42 now, unless his sentence will be commuted. Face off at the right dot to the glove side, and it's shot on goal and scored. A quick shot through traffic by Charlie West who draws first blood and the scoreboard operators will get their fingers moving. It's one to zero, 14.47 to go here in the first. And the sentence for Cesarski will be commuted as he took a penalty that led to a goal. The and Billikens are missing their top power play scorer, Gus Heithouse, as we mentioned, but they're no worse for wear so far after one power play opportunity. Backhanded in front of the Indiana bench by Goodfellow. Pushed forward, flies up into the arms of kicker, but it's pushed away. Trainer playing around with it at his own blue line, pushing it across. We've played nearly six. The Billikens are up one. Scooped up baseball style right in front of the high slot. That was Jackson going down to a knee. He's harassed by Brandenburg, who goes down to his hip. Kicker loses under his own blade at the right point, chipped up off the glass. Trainer knocking it away with the blade of his stick. It bounces against the cage. The netting shakes a little bit, and Michelli moves around to the left circle. Dancing outside the hash marks, kicks it back down low to DiLorenzo. He thinks about a centering pass, and it's wide all the way across to the St. Louis bench. Goodfellow takes a hit, and now we're going to have what appears to be too many men on the ice for St. Louis, as there was all kinds of commotion in front of their bench. Indiana's going to be going on the power play here, and one thing we mentioned in the pregame, Sam, St. Louis has been killer on the power play this year. And the first opportunity they get in this game, they're able to put it in the net. Indiana's got to stay out of the box if they want to win this one. We do have to put a qualifying statement on that number, that power play number of 58% because not all the games are reported so far. Indiana has a two minute advantage, five on four. Cruz trying to pull the puck away, but it's stuck under the leg of Rubis. Now Kenyon emerges at the left dot, pushing it to the backside to McDonald. 
Whisks against the boards, and it's under McDonald's backside. A through pass over to the high slot. Back to Cesarski. He thinks about a shot. Now to McDonald's, the right circle. Played through traffic again, and it will be played harmlessly by Jeffrey Au, the one who sustained that big hit that sent Cesarski to the box just two minutes ago. McDonald leaves it off the glass for himself. Now plays it to Kissel, who mishandles it. 1.20 to go on the five on four for Indiana. The first shorthanded opportunity the Billikens have had to endure so far. Cesarski thinks about quarterback in the offense. Here comes DiLorenzo. Gives it back to the captain, moving at his own blue line. Onto the toe of DiLorenzo on the near side. He'll try and reload an attack as well. Dancing around. Leaves it for Kenyon at the left circle. He stick handles. A slap shot from Cesarski goes wide. Half the penalty gone. Kenyon moving around with it in the near corner. Moving along the goal line. A centering pass goes through traffic again. DiLorenzo's stick lift is successful. And now a shot by Cruz bounces away and wobbles past the leather of Hockenberry to his left side. 35 seconds to go on the attack for Indiana. Cruz bangs it against the glass. And now it's over to Kenyon again working the goal line. He tries to stick handle and is hit in the back. Here's Cruz working towards Cesarski. His shot gloved down and straight onto the ice. A big juicy deflection gets thrown all the way across and Indiana will have to vacate the zone giving their opponents five fresh, four fresh legs, pardon me, for the remainder of this power play. Jeremy mishandles it and nearly surrenders possession in his own end. 10 seconds left on the attack. Indiana will have one more rush before it's five aside. Here's Michelli at the right circle. He thinks about a shot. Stonewall save. Hockenberry stood his ground at the right post. Good fellow, chips it down low again. Here's Jeremy moving through defenders. He shoots and it's off the glass on the backside. Scooped up straight out of the box. Here comes Jeffrey Al. He thinks about it, shoots and scores. One, two move right in front of McCaskey. And Indiana, with one of their reserve goaltenders, has given up a quick two to start things off. 11.42 to go, Indiana trailing by a crooked number. Indiana winners of six straight coming into today. Maybe they got a little bit ahead of themselves and overlooked this St. Louis team early. I mean, they've been looking pretty solid so far. The numbers don't lie. A pair of goals as Jeffrey Au gets goal number five on the season. He'll be tied for second on the team in goals. Knocked forward, McDonald pushes it forward into the attacking third. Here comes Simino moving around. He takes a body hit and it's Offenbach who knocks it forward again. McDonald jamming at it. Throws his stick up against the glass, trying to poke the puck free. Now to Offenbach, yanking away at the puck, trying to knock it away. And Timmons holds it on top of the City of Bloomington logo at center ice. Chipped up in front of the scorer's table and pushed into the Indiana attacking zone. Now the Billikens moving around. It's Waterman throws it forward along a goal line, and Kicker wins the race to the line. He moves around with it, gets tangled up, and it looks like he got held a little bit, but nothing called. Now Timmons gets spun around in the near corner. Here comes Offy moving through traffic and past the width of the ice over towards Simino who uses his body but is dispossessed. We've played half of this first period, 2-0 the score in favor of the visitors from St. Louis. Cesarski circling the wagons in his own side. Brandenburg loses it under his skate blade and again St. Louis punches it into the zone. Brennan knocks it forward to Cesarski who chips it up with his nine iron right along the red line. A big hit in open ice. Will Jackson sent onto his wallet. Indiana really needing to get some energy and that'll do it for the entire boys. If you're Coach Weiss, you gotta like that. Here comes Goodfellow throwing it into the zone, delayed offsides, and an arm gets put down. Looks like some paraphernalia out on the ice. Somebody's glove is standing in the zone. Meanwhile, the puck goes all the way past the Indiana goal and it's knocked free out of harm's way over to DiLorenzo. He circles around, his pass is nearly intercepted and then Brandenburg gets cross-checked down to the ice on his knees. A centering pass over to the stick of Riva. Cannot be controlled, kicked forward to Michelli. Over to DiLorenzo who enters the zone backwards but then loses possession. Another odd man rush, two on two. Finally, Indiana gets back and then a head first shot into the boards. That was Goodfellow going down hard. He's not happy about that. St. Louis is stepping up the physicality here in these past couple minutes. They've been laying some big hits. They, 
They've now caught up to Indiana. The hits are 5-4 in favor of the Cream and Crimson. As both sides get fresh legs onto the ice, Waterman comes in at the far point to keep it in the zone. Here comes Timmons shielding the puck with his body over to Goodfellow who pirouettes behind the cage. And more pitch and catch for Indiana's defenseman. Flicks forward and Indiana finally clears the blue line. Puck dancing around in front of the center circle and then thrown all the way across behind McCassie again who spins like a top looking for the puck. Zazarski thinking about it, doesn't have options. Gets pinned down against the boards and it's Timmons who relieves the pressure. No, moving around at the center circle. Over to Kissel who uh, tries a backhanded shot and then a pass. Finally back on it, there's Jeremy. Puck is flipped up and through the blue line. More fresh legs for St. Louis who really have the advantage in that situation since they are down two or three skaters. Kicker, one of these star youngsters for Indiana, absorbs a body blow and pays the price for trying to move the puck free. Another wild wobbler in front of the cage and it goes off a leg and it's moves forward by Null. Here he is at the left point, trying to stick handle, gets stolen away. Now over to Jeremy who gets dispossessed. Indiana really struggling to mount a continued attack. Brendan fighting for it viciously in front of the St. Louis bench. Now carrying it out of trouble is Sosin. He's over outside the left circle, tries a backhanded shot, but instead kicker delays him and forces him against the glass. Another hit just outside the right point, played forward toward Brendan. He moves into the high slot, gets tangled up and pushes it forward to a Flaherty who tries a reverse hit. And now throws his stick high into the face of Meyer and we're gonna have some pushing and shoving and some roughing penalties offered up to possibly both players. O'Flaherty well, wasn't happy about something there. It looked like he thought he might have got hit late and then continued to retaliate. They were both slashing each other like crazy and they're both going to the box. So we'll have matching minors for O'Flaherty and Nolan Meyer. That's the first time he's recorded a penalty this season and the only time so far that he's had his name on a score sheet. He hasn't had a goal or an assist either. We went at least three minutes without a stoppage right there too. The puck was going all over the place and now we've got a face off. Seven and a half to go here in the first. Indiana trailing by a pair. Face off on the glove side of Hockenberry in the St. Louis end, won by Indiana. Cesarski knocks it forward, but instead the Billikens move away with it across center ice. O'Flaherty in the box and Offenbach moving on the near side. He dipsy doos around one would be defender and plays it forward. Here's Cesarski on a rush. He thinks about it, shoots and scores! Cesarski goes bar down and cuts the deficit in half. The captain nets his seventh goal of the season. And just like that, Indiana responds in a big way. An odd man rush goal for Cesarski, two to one. St. Louis still in the driver's seat. Well, that's one way to get right back in it there. The four on four clears up the ice. And we've seen that a few times this season where when Indiana gets to the four on four, they make crisper passes, they spread out more, and Cesarski able to pull them within one here. Well, these two sides have just traded transition goals. An odd man rush for each side. Goodfellow plays it behind his back on a no-look pass to DiLorenzo. DiLorenzo, another great shooter for Indiana, has the only regular season penalty shot goal after he was awarded one way earlier in the season at Davenport. Six and a half to play in the first frame of the weekend. Moving around through traffic, it's Mikey Callahan. The younger brother throws a shot on from the high slot and it's gloved safely by McCaskey, who gets some stick taps and fist bumps from his boys out on the ice. Good for McCaskey to finally get a shot that he's able to see and read all the way from the blue line, Garrett. Yeah, that was a quick glove right there. It might have gone over the bar if he didn't get it, but it's always good to catch it and freeze it up and now Indiana with it. Face off to the glove side of the aforementioned McCaskey, won by Indiana. They're moving around with it in their own zone. Played all the way across, a diagonal pass to Michelli, who then seeds the blue line yet again. Spinning around, looking for options. Plays it all the way across into the neutral zone. Here's DiLorenzo all by himself. Now has Michelli on the far side, but gets tied up, and it gets stolen away. Travis Herrick plays it away, and Cesarski, right after scoring a goal, is back onto the ice. Chips off one body and the skate of DiLorenzo. He heads to the bench, and Indiana will get a change. St. Louis setting up an attack. Here's Herrick at the right circle. 
Throws a shot, but it's off the leg of McCaskey. Pardon me, Cesarski. Brandenburg in the near corner. Leaves it to Kissel. Jamming it forward along the red line, passing to no one in particular. All the way finally over to the stick of Charlie West. He gets buried and sent down to his shin protectors by Griffin Timmons, who's throwing the body around. Speaking of throwing a puck around now, they've got it in the attacking zone. Long shot gloved by McCaskey. And finally, play stops with 519 to go here in the first. Garrett, all this nonstop action is wearing both of us out. Yeah, no question. We've had minimal stoppages in this first period, and the players are starting to get a little tired and sloppy with the line changes as well, so that's one thing to look out for. Indiana wins the faceoff in their own zone to the stick side of McCaskey. Another big hit, Goodfellow. That's the fourth hit we've seen him try to make. Now kicker scoops it up, steps around a blocker, and it's knocked away off of the waffle board of McCaskey. Indiana still can't dispossess St. Louis. And the sustained attack continues. Wobbling toward Charlie West. Four on four is over. We're at five aside. Puck still in the zone. And now Null knocks somebody high into the air. And the puck has been flown up into the roof and gets stuck in the rafters, Garrett. Would you look at that? I'm a My junior. Goodness. Garrett, I've been here since 2019, 2020. I've never seen that here at the Frank. And frankly, I don't know how you get that lodged that far up into the air between those two boards. I tell you what, if that puck didn't get stuck in the roof, I think it was coming right for us. It certainly was. And Garrett, I don't think the roof has been changed since they put it in in 1970. Pretty much all original, so that's a dent that'll stay there. Here comes Indiana on an attack, a quick pass over to the near side. Cesarski handling it at the circle. His shot gets pillow kicked away. And St. Louis now has a rush of their own. Good movement on the stick. Now moving forward is Penberthy. His shot gets kicked high into the air off a of deflection. And we'll have a stoppage in play. 4.20 to go here in period number one. Two to one the score in favor of the St. Louis Billikens. Garrett, it looks like this evening the fraternities and sororities have finally showed up. Finally shown up, rather. And we've got a raucous crowd just like we did at the Louisville games. Yeah, the Barstool IU shout out really got the crowd out here tonight, as you can tell. Well, for an eighth-ranked team on a six-game win streak, it's bound to get the blood pumping. Here comes Krush at the left circle. And an offside has been called as looks like Chambers was a little bit too eager to enter the zone. Yeah, he wasn't expecting Vlad to go side to side there like he did when he was about an inch away from the blue line. That's something that it's all it all comes down to communication, and you got to know players' tendencies, and you try to do a little too much right there. Face off to the near side just outside the Billiken zone pushed away by Indiana and St. Louis will have to play it out of trouble. Pinned up against the boards and knocked free. There comes Simino laying a big hit. He goes down and we got a whistle on the ice as offside has been called by the linesman on the far side of the ice now, Garrett. Aiden Simino laying a big hit down right there and it seems like the boys are trying to get the crowd into it as much as they can to try to make a difference in this one. Face off right in front of the student section, if you will, on the near side. Won by St. Louis, whacked into the zone off the stick of Nolan Meyer. Timmons loses it, tries to stick handle along the wall. Instead, Offenbach has to come around and scoop it up for him. Played forward to McDonald. McDonald entering the zone, has a pass in front. It's deflected and goes high into the air, hitting the disco ball, but play continues. Three and a half to go. Indiana still trailing by one. McDonald finishes his check on a man. Kicker playing the puck into the slot. No one was home, and St. Louis will play it away. Herrick moving around with it at his own blue line. Offenbach steals it away. A backhand pass to the blue line, but it's knocked free again. Here comes Peter Trainer. His shot goes through a body. And Indiana moving forward again on the near side. Brennan tries to throw a hit instead. St. Louis scoops up the puck uncontested. Cesarski plays pitch and catch with Brandenburg, who lets McDonald chip it up off the glass for the line change for the Cream and Crimson. Under three to go here in the frame. Backhanded pass, here's De Lorenzo working the goal line. A quick centering pass through the legs, kicked away. Loose behind the cage. Now it's Trainer moving forward, chips it off the glass. In front of his own bench, Brennan gets tangled up, and then it's another St. Louis skater who loses his edge. Puck bounces against the boards in front of the students and played the width of the neutral zone all the way across to De Lorenzo. Indiana gets the rest of their change on. 
Here's Goodfellow emerging from the bench. Brandenburg knocks it back toward Goody, who gets a fist to the chest and stays on the puck. Here comes Turgelian moving toward the right circle. He gets a body hit from Kicker, who's doing everything he can to get the crowd engaged and keep the bodies moving. A long, optimistic shot wristed by Avery Reba and scooped up easily by McCaskey. He plays it free. Here's Michelle on the near side. Tries to nutmeg one defenseman, and then it looks like one of the defensemen got hit where it hurts. DiLorenzo songs at the puck. He gets spun around behind the goal line. Here's Michelle moving behind the cage. Now St. Louis carrying it through traffic. Over toward Turgellian again. That's Reba on it with the shot through traffic. Backhanded pass over to the far side. McCaskey gets over and paddles it away. Pass along the backboards. Michelle at the short boards absorbs a hit and tries to knock it free. Indiana can't clear the blue line. They are trying in vain to do so. St. Louis with that break gets all five new guys onto the ice. Dancing around with it, that's Janelle. Over to Waterman now on the near side. Throws a shot high up into the air with just 61 seconds to go here in the first. Indiana's had trouble getting the puck into the opponent's zone, unless it's on a rush. Really, besides the rushes, we haven't seen much of bringing the puck up the ice, getting everybody organized and getting in there. I'll tell you what, Garrett, the Billikens really took the crowd out of this first period by getting the first two goals. Not nearly as rowdy as we've seen in games past where the inebriated patrons are making their presence known. Here comes Cesarski playing it to Jeremy at the left circle. He moves around over to the high slot. It wobbles off of his stick and we're under a minute to play. On a rush, that's Corker leaving it free to Herrick, but the puck bounces across the blue line and we'll have an over and back offside with 45 to go here in the first. The crowd's getting into it here, Sam. More people are still coming in as we speak and the first period's almost over. Well, fashionably late, Garrett. Perfect time to show up as Indiana's trying to mount a comeback. Face off in front of the blue line. Won by Indiana, Cesarski takes the pitch and catch from his D partner, Timmons. Stick handling on the far side by Rubis. He's dispossessed and with 30 seconds left, here comes Jeremy on a rush. Over to the high slot, gets tangled up with Kissel and a Billikens defenseman. Puck chipped off the glass again. Jeremy looking for options at the left circle. Wobbles towards Cesarski, his shot goes into a leg pad. Now to Chambers who gets thrust into the boards again and Timmons can't hold on to the puck. We're down to 15 seconds and that'll be an icing as no one was able to get the blade of their stick onto it. So Indiana will try to get one more big attack set up before the buzzer sounds on this period. They're gonna have 14 seconds to try to do something here. Winning the face off is the most important part and then you go from there. And it looks like it's gonna be Jeremy taking the draw. Two to one Indiana trying to tie it up before the buzzer sounds. St. Louis wins the face off to the stick side of their netminder, Hockenberry. Five seconds left, puck glances off the boards on the near side, knocked away by Goodfellow, and that should do it for period number one. So through 20 minutes of hard hitting action here at the Frank, it's two to one, St. Louis leading the hometown boys of Indiana University. Garrett Drake alongside Sam Wexler. We'll send you to the break in the intermission before Garrett takes over in the second. This is Club Ice Hockey at Indiana University on the Indiana Hockey Broadcast Network.
And we're back getting set for the start of period number two at the Frank Southern Ice Arena in Bloomington. St. Louis currently leading Indiana two to one, and they scored two quick goals out of the gate. Nathan Cesarski able to get Indiana back into the game, scoring on the four on four. And we've got 15 seconds left until we get ready for action here. And we want to take a look at the TSCHL standings before we get set in the second period. Yeah, Garrett, Indiana has pole vaulted their way to second in the entire TSCHL as well as second in the South Division. Obviously because the Miami Red Hawks have been red hot, they have yet to lose a single game and have won every single contest that counts toward league play in regulation, which means they've gotten three points from every single game. Whereas, yeah. whereas Indiana had one shootout win against Louisville that only got them two points. But fortunately for Indiana, all of the games in this win streak have been against TSCHL opponents. St. Louis today is their first non-TSCHL excuse me, opponent that they've played in quite some time now. And it appears that there's a lack of familiarity with this St. Louis team and Indiana, and they're both trying to figure each other out as we get set for period number two. Kind of like boxers sparring a little bit right before the end of the first bell. And Garrett, you said it. This is a feeler first period for sure. Cesarski had a quick Russian goal, and the Billikens had two to open the game up back to back. And I think Indiana pick up, picked up the physicality after that. Yeah, no question. They got knocked down a little bit in the beginning, especially when they went down two to nothing. But Cesarski's goal was a momentum builder, no doubt about it. And we're getting set for the opening face off of period number two. It's time for hockey in Bloomington. Off the draw, it's taken by St. Louis and flipped in through the neutral zone behind the net and flipped up towards the middle, but it's back out. Brandenburg lost it off his stick. Cesarski tried to find DiLorenzo, but the pass was cut off. Now a shot goes past McCaskey and it finds its way back towards the middle. And again, McCaskey with a kick save. That one will go all the way down to the other end for an icing behind the net and behind Hockenberry. Garrett, a lot of the parents are in the building this evening so to support the boys. So we got a full arena and a little bit different crowd, as we mentioned, from the usual Friday night. It's not quite the Saturday matinee where we've got the kids sitting next to us, the preschoolers and elementary students listening to us, but it's still a fun atmosphere. Oh, yeah, no question about it. There were a lot of kiddos here earlier as well. I actually uh, signed an autograph today. Uh, the first time I've done that in my life, but it was a fun experience. Now the puck is played in behind and back towards the neutral zone off the stick of McKay. He was unable to handle it, and Cesarski's there to retreat. Indiana looking to get something going. That one is deflected off the leg right there of Nolan Meyer, and it goes up and out of play. Well, Hockenberry's back in the cage for... St. Louis, and as is McCaskey returning. We thought perhaps there might be some sort of shift in between the pipes for Indiana, but McCaskey stays in. Hockenberry had a pretty solid first period with the exception of the Cesarski goal. And we're getting the chance going here in the Frank as there's fans lined up all along the boards near the St. Louis net. At the other end, it's flipped in by Kicker behind the net. And off the boards, it's played back and grabbed by Goodfellow. He tries kicking it to a teammate. And it goes behind. Kissel unable to control that one, and it finds Kicker. And Garrett, I think it's important to make the point, it is unseasonably warm here at the Frank. The ice is not solidifying. We've got basically a small lake in front of us. And I have to say it's warmer over where we're sitting and I think we're getting a little bit short on breath and short on water. Yeah, I can't tell if uh, somebody actually decided to pay the bill this month and that's what's going on or they stopped paying the bills and that's why it's getting room temperature in here. But Well, Mother Nature struck back. No question about that. The face off controlled by St. Louis in their own zone and now they're trying to get it out. Bruce keeps it alive, trying to find Kenyon. He gets pressed up along the boards and kicks it to himself. 
Now back at the blue line. It's played in by Timmons. And that puck caught the official up high. He appears to be all right. Looks like he might have slipped on the wet ice, as you mentioned. Now playing it up is Brennan for Krush. They tried to find O'Flaherty, but he was unsuspecting of the puck. Timmons flips it up off of Kenyon, and now O'Flaherty on the rush. Looks like he may have been offside. No call, however. Kenyon gets towards the middle. They flip it in for Krush, and a save made by Hockenberry. It went right in between his pads. Hockenberry getting his first shot seen in this middle frame. And Garrett, I'm interested to see how the long change will affect things and the pace of play. Because as we mentioned, St. Louis is short four skaters and Indiana is down two goaltenders. And there were very little stoppages in the first period. So St. Louis, without a doubt, is going to be tired by the end of this one. Bringing it up for the Billikens now is Patrick Waterman, the Indianapolis native who was teammates with a couple of Indiana players like Nathan Chinney and Alex Shabazz. That one flipped in and grabbed with the glove. Offenbach still searching for his first goal of the campaign. And Garrett, I'm secretly hoping I get to call that goal, but if it comes in the second period to tie things up, I wouldn't be complaining. I would say the sooner the better, but as long as it comes, that's all that matters. So. Behind the blue line is played by McKay. And it's flipped in behind towards the middle. Neutralized now, it's played in. Simino trying to get towards the net. He's pushed off right there. And a big hit, Nolan Meyer took the brunt of that one for St. Louis. And now on the rush, it's a, th it's a three on two. Indiana's able to get back. And that one was flipped past the net. Twirling and trying to get open ice right there was Charlie West. He had a couple of stick handles along the way, and now it's played behind a big hit. Cesarski laid out the defender, and then they score. St. Louis goes up 3-1 to one here, 4 minutes and 40 seconds into period number two. I didn't see where the puck bounced. I just saw the Cesarski hit, but it looked like it went up and over McCaskey and just plopped down in the net. From what we can see, it'll be credited to the older of the Callahan brothers, Joey Callahan, the sophomore from Chicago. The crowd still into this ball game, no question about it. As it's the wraparound is played by DiLorenzo and kept in at the blue line right there by Avery Riva, who started this game for St. Louis. Goodfellow takes a big hit along the boards near the St. Louis bench. Bench. This has been a very physical game thus far. DiLorenzo trying to chase that one down. He's able to get to it, but he's cut off. Now the wraparound finds Michelli. That one off the stick of kicker. He's able to corral it. He gets shoved down from behind. And we get a whistle here. Let's see. It looks like the water bottle came out of the net and that's what the stoppage was for from behind McCaskey. Garrett, if Indiana wants to make a push in this game, they're gonna have to bring the physicality and keep it up. They've gotta have the speed all the way across the sheet and they've gotta force St. Louis to play in a very tight rink. And Garrett, we've talked about it before. The blue line is only four feet away from the center circle. That's very unusual and very small. There's not a lot of room, and that's part of the reason why we see so many big hits here at the Frank. Players just don't suspect that they can cover that much ground in as little time as they can, and we've seen a few of those here today. The face-off controlled by Jeremy in their own zone, and now a battle for it. Sees Jeremy coming out with the puck. He plays, plays it through the neutral zone, flips one off the pad. Indiana's passing has been lacking here in these past couple minutes as we're five minutes into the second period Kissel takes a big hit here comes Jeremy towards the other end trying to dangle his way through and he plays it behind where it's taken there by Chambers that one nearly found Kissel out in front but it's cleared and McKay will have to go back to retrieve 
Here comes Matt McKay. He plays it off the stick of Proof. And now this one will go right at McCaskey, and he will cover it. The fans are calling for Jack Kissel to get out onto the ice. He had a hat trick the last time out against the Kentucky Wildcats, although we had to change it because Vladislav Krush originally was scored with one of the goals. Jack Kissel's been on an offensive tear lately. I think looking at the stats, he has something like six or seven goals in the past five games. Leading the team in all three categories, goals, yeah. assists, and points. He really stepped up. He's got 18 points on the year. That shot by Krush gets deflected off a stick and it goes all the way up and over the net. I think it put another dent in the HVAC system on the far side of the ice, Garrett. Yeah, something's clearly not working with this ice here today, but the players don't seem to mind it too much. This is the first game at the Frank that I can remember that I haven't had to wear gloves and a toque. It's quite warm here. Yeah, no question, especially for a hockey game. We've been in some cold barns this year, but the Frank feels nice and toasty on this December night. O'Flaherty tried to center it, but he got tripped up, no call on the play. And now coming with it the other way for St. Louis is Terzelian. He gets pressed up along the boards by Cesarski and loses the puck. McKay and Cesarski scrapping for it and it rolls out behind the net. The centering pass goes off of McCaskey's pad. And now O'Flaherty trying to get it out, he finds Krush. Indiana's got a chance for something here off the boards and it hit the official, trying to find Kenyon. He had a, he looked like he had a shot at a break as well on that one. The crowd getting into it. Garrett, the shots on goal here in the second frame, five to three in favor of St. Louis, but the hits are a dead heat, five apiece. The only difference in the hits that there is is I feel St. Louis's have been a little more punishing this period. Indiana's taken some bruising hits that they're gonna feel tomorrow, no question, and that might have an impact on the three o'clock game tomorrow. DiLorenzo tried to flip a shot from the blue line, but it was deflected right there by Corker. Michelli in the corner playing it back to DiLorenzo. Goodfellow flips one toward <coughs> towards the net, excuse me, and it's grabbed by Hockenberry. Seems like this heat is getting to both of us, Garrett. Yeah, normally I'm used to having to deal with a runny nose or something like that, but not today. The sinuses are clear. DiLorenzo flips one in. It was deflected by Michelli out in front as he was trying to set a goalie screen. A battle along the boards with Kissel, and now Goodfellow flips one. It's palmed down and sent all the way to the other end. McCaskey comes out of the crease to play it, and he finds DiLorenzo on the near side. Twelve forty-five to go in period number two. Jeremy carrying it in. He tries to go all the way. Didn't get the shot off. He does the wraparound, but kept the puck on his stick. Didn't get a shot on net there on a good rush. Half the power play already gone for Indiana. That was really the only opportunity they had in the first minute. They're gonna have to take advantage of these last 50 seconds. Krush playing it over to the far side. He gets it back, backhand by McDonald that goes high. And now there's a battle for it. Kenyon playing it across. The shot by O'Flaherty and he scores! Jack O'Flaherty on a beautiful feed from Cade Kenyon. The alternate captain picks up the apple right there. And O'Flaherty on the one-timer puts it top show. So Indiana gets a power play goal and the crowd jumps right back into this game. It didn't take much to get the crowd on their feet here and they're throwing out their fair share of chirps here. The faceoff controlled by Indiana in the neutral zone. McKay plays it back. Cesarski and McKay playing pitch and catch now. Simino trying to get through on the rush. He plays it towards the middle. McDonald around the net. Back up towards Cesarski. He flips one 
off the defender, hit off his skate. That was Pentberthy right there. And now St. Louis carrying it up. That one went off the stick of Pent Berthy right there. The St. Louis native, and he has been hearing it from this crowd all game long. I don't know what he did wrong, but he's not a popular customer here in Bloomington. Well, the last number four in a blue sweater here at the Frank was Dan Cordapella for Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken, Garrett, and he received a tongue lashing severe from the crowd as well. The face off won by Indiana, and Brennan plays it towards the neutral zone where it's flipped in by Waterman. And now on the far side, here comes Tommy McDonald. Into the attacking zone, he tries to shove his man off in a big hit against the boards. And we might have a fight here, and it appears we will. Tommy McDonald and Peter Trainer getting into it on the far side. The referees get in there quickly to break it up. Trainer's cage has come undone, and it's getting rowdy here in Bloomington. We'll see what the punishments are, if there are any. It looks like Trainer and McDonald will go to the box. No matching minors, it appears, so far. At the moment, is Jets going to be trainer? It looked like the official was trying to pull McDonald towards the box, but he refused to go, and hes I guess he's not. So it'll be a power play for Indiana. I'm not sure how, but I'll take it. Indiana's already got two power play goals. Cesarski on an odd man rush. And just a minute ago with O'Flaherty on the five on four. And McDonald will now be taking the draw here. We'll see if there's any retaliation for that. So to kick off the Indiana power play, St. Louis controlling the puck, but McDonald plays it back. And now Kenyon brings it into the zone. He finds Krush on the near side. McDonald trying to put a move on. And McCaskey will stop that one. And now there's some pushing and shoving going on. Kissel whacking oh. with his stick, and he's going to go to the box for that. Well, Kissel had a stick in his own face and then whacked it away with the edge of his. And that's an inexcusable action by Kissel. You know you're going to get called for that, especially after we just saw a gloves-on fight in the far corner. The referees are going to have their eyes open, and they're going to see that. That's going to take away the power play for Indiana right there. We're back to four-on-four four action. Cesarski trying to get out of the corner, and now he's got some room to work. Oh, or Chambers, rather playing it in and now Jeremy trying to get a flip shot away and we might have a break here. McKay able to get back fortunately for Indiana. It's poked away by Chambers, a good play with the stick right there by number nine. Chambers brings it in. The shot, Cesarski gets blocked out in front. We're now halfway through the second period here. It's a three to two contest. St. Louis continuing to lead. That'll go all the way down for an icing. And when the penalty on St. Louis expires, they will have about a 20 second power play. The man in the box serving the minor for St. Louis's trainer, he's one of their assistant captains. He's got an A on his sweater. And he felt the brunt of Tommy McDonald in the far corner before he went to the box. We'll have the face-off from center ice here. It'll be Tommy McDonald taking the draw against Jeffrey Au, or Au rather, and now playing it into the zone. It goes behind the net. McDonald looking to lay a hit, but it finds the stick of Kenyon, who tried to put on a spin move, but was unable to corral the puck. 
kicker avoiding a big hit there as the referee might have helped with the screen. And Garrett, I've heard more unbecoming comments this evening than a 1970s movie. Yeah, they've, they've been a plenty. And we still have another period in nine, well, basically period and a half to play. So it's only going to get more interesting from here. McDonald taking the draw, and St. Louis controls it. That one found traffic and never got through. Kenyon tried playing it through. It sticked down. A nice play there by Tregelian. Here's a shot by Goodfellow that goes wide of the net. And St. Louis will bring it back up towards the neutral zone. Nolan Meyer playing it behind McCaskey, and now it's grabbed by Kicker. That one played all the way through, and it finds the stick of Terzelian right there. He centers it. A good job cutting that off by Semino. The puck bounces high and hits the rafters. It looked like it might have gone off the crossbar. Garrett, if I'm not mistaken, the disco ball is shaking up there. They better check for loose glass on the ice in front of McCaskey. Yeah, I believe it hit the black support that's holding up the disco ball over there, but... Fortunately for us, it missed the glass portion. As I know, you've seen it break before. Eight minutes and 55 seconds to go in period number two. St. Louis continuing to lead three to two. We're back to even strength. That one went off the stick of Semino. And it's flipped up and gloved down by McKay. Twirling through the neutral zone are multiple people and a big hit. Oh my goodness, McKay laid his man out and he is down. At the other end, another big hit in the corner. Will Jackson got hit and he got hit hard. And he hasn't gotten up yet. Jeffrey Awe discussing something with the official. It looks like he might have wanted a penalty for that. Well, he's certainly arguing his case. He might have one. It looked, it looked like McKay might have left his feet on that one. Well, no hand signal yet from the orange stripes or the zebras. All of this happening with eight minutes and 29 seconds left to play in the second. And it just continues to get more chippy as we go. This is only making me more and more excited to watch the third. The faceoff won by Indiana. Brennan plays it off the backboards. Timmons trying to get through, and here comes Noel on a rush. It goes off of his skate and played towards the net. Noel got hit after the play. That's gonna be a penalty on St. Louis. There was also some extracurricular action as Chambers took a knee to the thigh. That's one of those hits that'll give you a bone bruise. Charlie West is gonna go to the box right here to put Indiana back on the man advantage. And Garrett, interesting note, Charlie West has a connection to the Indiana team, a former defenseman, Scotty Berger, who graduated a year ago was one of the stalwarts on the blue line for Indiana. He has a younger brother named Christian who plays at Penn State for the hockey team and played with Charlie West back in high school in St. Louis. We'd like to give Scotty a shout out for the intel. As always, one of the IU alumni, IU hockey alumni, I should say. Tommy McDonald wanted a trip there. That would have given him a five on three, but no call. And now McCaskey will play it out. Towards the blue line, the puck is grabbed and brought in by Trainer. Trainer centers it. The puck is still loose and it squirts out towards the near corner. A big hit laid on All right there. He's able to get up. And Krush comes out with the puck. We're down to one minute and 10 seconds remaining on the man advantage. Krush dangling through. He plays it towards the center. Kenyon flips one on and it's just wide as it went high. 
Grubis loses his stick right there. There's a glove on the ice. And that one is played all the way to the other end. Indiana will have to regroup with 6.54 to go. They've got a three on one here. Here comes DiLorenzo playing it across. Offenbach centers it, oh, and what a save as Hockenberry stuck the foot out and kept that one from going in. Garrett, I'm not so sure that Indiana didn't get in their own way and shoot themselves in the foot. It looked like they got a little bit too close and ran out of real estate on that attack. That puck had an opportunity to find Nylon, but Hockenberry stuck his foot out at the last second to keep it out. Jeremy plays it across. There's a shot. Di Lorenzo, he scores! Ethan Di Lorenzo on the one-timer, and we are tied. A power play goal once again for Indiana. And he ripped that one top shelf, similar to what Jack O'Flaherty did on his goal. And we're all tied up at the Frank. Both teams going to their benches here. I'm not sure what's going on. St. Louis might have taken a timeout. That seems reasonable after the goal. And uh, Garrett, we mentioned Scotty Berger earlier. He's from the St. Louis area, played with several of these guys way back in high school, including Steve Lockwood, Nick Corker, and a plethora of other guys as well. Charlie West was one of those at St. Louis U. And we want to thank Scotty for giving us the heads up on some of these guys. It's always nice to get some support from former players and some intel pregame. And Indiana able to tie the score here with 6.18 to go in the second. Off the one-time goal from Ethan DiLorenzo. That's the seventh goal of the season for D'Lo. And we've touched on it before this season, but the young players have stepped up big time for this Indiana squad. That's what's special about this year. Most teams are having a rebuilding year, as is Bowling Green, normally a powerhouse considering they've got an NCAA team. And this year, they're just struggling to play. Xavier's also short seven or eight players with their small roster as well, and we saw that when Indiana dominated them twice. Chambers plays it back up towards the blue line where the puck is corralled by Matt McKay. He gets pushed along the boards and now the puck finds Chambers once again. Timmons flips it up over the defense and it will go all the way to the back boards. McDonald gets pressed up against the glass, trying to free his stick. And that one deflects up high. It's kept in by Timmons, but nobody was there. Another big hit from Tommy McDonald. He's been hunting out bodies in this game. McKay playing it up towards Chambers. He just taps it in for a line change. 5.20 to go here in period number two. Here comes Awe trying to swirl in. Waiting for reinforcements now. The puck along the wall. Tried to find Corker. Brandenburg plays it up for Indiana now. That one deflected off somebody out in front or else that shot might have been on net. Kicker plays it up. And that one got touched. Maybe not. We're gonna get a nice. Well, Garrett, it's good to hear the fans are getting back into this game now that it's tied. They've been rowdy all night, but especially after Indiana has scored and it's only going to get more rowdy once we get to period number three, and that includes the players on the ice as well. Michelli leaves it off for Brandenburg. Indiana's got a man advantage here. Michelli across. He scores! Drew Michelli off a beautiful feed, able to put Indiana out in front, and that's the third goal of the period for Indiana. The crowd is really into it now, Sam. What a top-shelf burner. Michelli 
helped on by Brandenburg and we believe to be kicker. My goodness gracious. What a turn after Indiana trailed after 20 minutes. Goal number three of the year for Drew Michelli. And what a finish it was. We still have five minutes to go in period number two and it's been action packed. Jeremy clips one on that goes off the pad of Hockenberry. Behind the net and now bringing the puck out is Charlie West. St. Louis has a three on two advantage but it's knocked off beautifully by Matt McKay. The puck is kept in the zone and now Indiana with numbers the other way. Jeremy brings it in. He shoots and it's off the glove. Here comes West flipping it up towards the chest of Cesarski and he bats it down. That shot went wide by Corker. Cesarski gets pressed up against the boards, trying to kick it free. Still kicking it along the boards, and now it's flipped up by Chambers and hits off the official. But it goes right to Kissel. It gets poked off of his stick at an untimely moment right there. Cesarski keeps it in the neutral zone. Jeremy brings the puck in. His defender falls down. Jeremy tried playing it back in, but Indiana tried to change. Kicker flings it along the boards where the puck is grabbed by Kenyon. Here's a shot that hit off the defender out front. Cruz tried going to the backhand there and it went high. Kicker trying to poke the puck free and it rolls all the way around to the far side to be played by Cruz. Cruz crossed it, but nobody was there. Kicker flips one on, but it was blocked with a stick. Kenyon is the last defense for Indiana. And now he gets some reinforcements. Three minutes to go in period number two. Indiana leads 4-3. And I think they're gonna get a hand pass there. Either a hand pass or a, a hand pass or a high stick, Garrett. There were multiple blades up in the air when that puck flew across the left circle. Off the draw, O'Flaherty trying to deflect that one, and now it goes all the way to McCaskey, who plays the puck. Kenyon on the near side, bringing it over. We've seen numerous players slipping and falling on this ice. Kenyon trying to dangle through defenders like McDavid, flips it behind the net. Yeah, I think there's only one guy in the planet that can do that, Sam, and it's Connor McDavid. Or Will Jeremy on an odd man rush by himself. Yeah, no, <laughs> no doubt about that. <coughs> Kenyon flipped that one up high and it went over the head right there of Charlie West and now we've got a stoppage and the fans are not pleased about that one. This period has taken much more real time than the first did. We've had a lot more stoppages and goals. McKay plays it through it and finds Simino. He leaves it off for McDonald. Here's McKay. McDonald falls down on the ice. Again, it catches another victim. And the puck is gloved down and played forward. And right there, Peter Trainer gets laid out again. How many more big hits are we going to see this game? We still have another 20 minutes. Hits are 12 to 6 in Indy. favor of the Crim Crimson. I think anybody in the audience could have figured out who was winning the hit battle, especially this period. It's the Cream and Crimson, and they've really been playing physical. That one kept on side. And off the glove of McCaskey, it goes all the way back towards the blue line. A deflection out in front off the stick of Herrick nearly fooled him. And now on the other end, Semino flips it up. Back into the neutral zone. St. Louis will have to reset. We're down to the final minute of play in period number two. 
kicker, plays it to Semino. Semino flips it all the way through, but the puck is going to go past the net for icing. There's some players getting into it now. It looks like McDonald's going to go to the box. One thing we've learned this season is that Tommy McDonald doesn't take smack from anybody. And no, he's high up on the list in penalty minutes per game. He's not quite the leader like Cesarski, but he's way up there. And he got a game misconduct, pardon me, a 10-minute misconduct at the end of the game against Kentucky last Saturday that did not have an impact on the game. It ended up just being added on by the officials when they were already in the dressing room. He got sent off in Louisville as well after he scored his hat trick. It's a little bit more acceptable when you score three goals, but. There's a, there's a chant breaking out here at the Frank with some expletives being said. We're gonna keep it PG on this channel. The officials still discussing something by the Indiana bench. It was an, an elongated conversation between Coach Weiss and two of the Zebras. Garrett, according to the scoreboard, it'll be McDonald sitting alongside Herrick. That was a good. All right, off the face off. St. Louis able to control it. The clock's not running. I don't think anybody's realized, and now it is. Offenbach plays it in. He swirls around trying to find the stick of kicker, but he was unable to. Kicker gets free out in front, trying to keep the puck in the zone. And now St. Louis will bring it up. We're down to the final 30 seconds of the period. Kicker making a man miss, bringing it through the neutral zone. We're now down to 20 seconds to go. They got to try to get a shot on net here. Offenbach from the blue line, plays it over. Timmons across, finds kicker, and a beautiful save by Hockenberry there as he came out of the crease to get that one. Kicker falls victim to the slippery ice, and we're going to get a stoppage with 5.9 seconds to go. Now it was just clarified and fixed up on the big board that the penalty on Tommy McDonald is going to be a five-minute major for roughing instead of a two-minute minor, as Carrick did. I would have to imagine the reason for that being McDonald's kind of been going at guys the whole game and the officials just trying to get it under control, it seems like. The faceoff controlled by Indiana, flipped back towards the blue line, and a shot never found the net, and that'll do it for period number two. Indiana able to net three goals in the period. St. Louis adds one, and the Hoosiers lead it four to three. Going into period number three, Sam will be back on the play-by-play -play for that. And, Sam, do you have anything to add for the, sec the end of the second here? Well, Indiana outshot St. Louis 15 to eight in that period. That's a big disparity between the two numbers. And as far as hits are concerned, Indiana had 12, and St. Louis stayed at six. So six to one, half a dozen the other doesn't quite fit that situation. Period number three coming up shortly. You're watching Club Ice Hockey at Indiana University on the Indiana Hockey Broadcast Network.
Back for the final 20 of regulation here at the Frank. After 40 minutes of play, it's 4-3, to three, Indiana netting a trio of goals in the middle frame to scoop back the lead after the Billikens had an early crooked number up on the board in the first. Welcome back to Bloomington, Indiana. I'm Sam Wexler back on the call alongside Garrett Drake and our technician over on the camera, Ben Stannard. Garrett, great job in the middle one. Indiana back in white sweaters from right to left, and the Billikens in blue from left to right. A quick rush and a centering pass goes right under the stick of Charlie West. West had a penalty that he served earlier in the second. And finally, Indiana clears the line. We've got four aside for the next 45 seconds, and then Indiana will be down to four men for the better part of three minutes as Tommy McDonald was charged with a major penalty for roughing. A quick shot high over the crossbar by McKay. Wobbles in front of the St. Louis bench, and O'Flaherty tucks it back in. Pushing forward, O'Flaherty holds the blue line, but cedes possession. Here comes West on a rush again. Still 20 seconds left on this four on four. Neither team really mounting a big attack. And Indiana tries to send the pass through. Here's Simino on a rush. High slot, shot blocked away by the leg of Hockenberry. 10 seconds to go on the four on four. Plenty of open ice for both sides. Good fellow trying to D up against Turgellian on the near side. Flipped up all the way across and with one second to go, we're gonna have it icing according to the linesman on the far side. Yeah, it looks like right there the puck slid off of Simino's stick right when he was about to let it go, and he kind of had to regather before he shot, and that gave the goalie time to make the save. We've got three different Indiana players in the box. I can't see the number on either of them. It looks like DiLorenzo is, for some reason, standing in the box, but his number is not up on the big board. So it'll be five on four for the Billikens. They've already got two power play goals of their own. Indiana fires it the length of the ice, but it's kicked down by Corker, the man with the C on his chest. He moves through traffic, tries to go backhand. A quick shot from point blank and it's knocked away. McCaskey, a great leg save. We've played 90 seconds here in the third. Indiana still holding onto the slimmest of margins. Centering pass goes over the stick of Callahan, the younger Callahan that is, and is all the way across the ice. Garrett, we talked about the fact that the blue line to the center circle is only four feet on either side. It's much shorter than a regulation rink and it's a little bit shorter in terms of width as well. So teams just aren't used to the physical play that they have to endure when they come here. We've seen a lot of big hits today as well and part of the reason is there's not enough spacing. Not as much open ice and now Al blows a tire. Going down hard as the ice is still wet. Offenbach trying to knock the puck free, but instead it's whisked right into the center circle off the stick of Herrick. He throws it all the way across, laying chase is Timmons, but it's reached over and gloved by McCaskey to stop play with 17.39 to go here in the final frame of regulation. One minute and 47 seconds left on the power play here for St. Louis. And Garrett, it should be noted that there were four different players for St. Louis who needed medical attention in between the second and third period. It was a log jam over on the far side in the walkway. Here comes Chambers dispossessing a man. He shoots, but it's off of his stick blade. A centering pass kicks away. Another shot from the right circle by Kicker. Good fellow, holds the point. A slap shot through traffic that is swallowed up by the bottom of the chest protector of Hockenberry. 17-17 on the clock, 125 remaining on the major penalty to Tommy McDonald. So Indiana would not get their fifth skater back on should they allow a goal. Brandenburg takes the face off and wins it. Here's Goodfellow at the left side. Over to Kicker who throws a shot through traffic. It's wide and harmlessly away over to the near point. A nice spinning pass attempted by Turgellian, but instead it's a D to D pass. Again to Turgellian at the left circle. He's getting harassed by Goodfellow, holding him from behind. Play continues. Moving forward on the near boards. That's West who fires it off the bar and out. Another big hit, Goodfellow collides with Jeffrey Au. Shot from long range and he scores. Charlie West threw it forward and off a deflection, it's all tied up. 16.44 to go in the third. And the marker will be credited to either Jeffrey Au or Charlie West depending on the scorer's decision. And as you mentioned, Sam, St. Louis will still be on the power play for these final 52 seconds. 
Well, Garrett, a little bit of an announcer's jinx, even though we've tried to admit that we don't believe in it. Nevertheless, it's four apiece and five on four instead of five aside. Face off in front of the city logo, won by Indiana. They smack it all the way across and will try to kill off the rest of this penalty without any more blemishes on the record. Indiana on the six-game win streak, trying to continue here at home. A big hit along the far side boards in Indiana's bench. And now Jeremy's got it all by himself at the left circle. Works the goal line, spins around, gets held up, and moves around to the high slot. He gets a poke check, and it's stolen away. Herrick doing all he can to keep the puck in front of a blue sweater. Waterman takes a big shoulder check from McKay. What a physical play. And it was a legal play, shoulder on shoulder contact. Indiana gets four fresh legs and will soon have five as the penalty for Tommy McDonald has expired. So a power play goal during that five minute major. And Indiana has seeded the lead. Here's Vladislav Cruz throwing a man into the boards in front of the scorer's table. Chipped up off the glass. Brennan tangled up, trying to yank it away. And then Cruz gets dumped right in front of the St. Louis bench. He's still down on all fours and gets a little smack on the side of the head from Rubis. Now to Brendan, who backhands it back toward the aforementioned Cruz. To Kenyon down low, waiting for it. Holding it over toward out the hash marks on the left side. Timmons throws a shot high. Tried to deflect it, Cruz did, but instead it's over to Kenyon again. He wobbles it off the boards, waits for a pass. Still looking for his options. Knocks it to Chambers in the corner down low. He moves around to the slot. Thinks about a shot. And it's now off of a traffic. Body in traffic, rather, Garrett. And wobbles all the way across. We've played five minutes in the final frame of regulation for a piece. In the second period, Indiana really controlled the battle on hits. Here's Kenyon right behind the cage, tries to wrap it around it. Poke check away. Still has it, chips it off the boards, trying to find a teammate to pass to. But instead, Cruz comes up empty handed. Now Goodfellow avoids the check and back toward Cruz it goes. He's behind, tries to wrap it around, jamming at it. A big struggle in the crease and Cruz is on his backside. He gets a quick forearm shiver to the head. And finally, cooler heads prevail as the linesmen and referees rushed in to stop play. 14.20 to go here in the third. And Garrett, I think that physical play is gonna be back for this final 20. Yeah, St. Louis came out guns a blazing here in the third. They were able to tie the game up and as you see, Vladislav Cruz tried to do the wraparound and they just jammed him right into the goaltender for a stoppage. Offenbach, one of the masters of the faceoff for Indiana this season, tries to win the faceoff, but instead is dispossessed by Al. Over to Chambers who smacks the puck into the near corner. Rimming around, there's Offie trying to lay chase. Simino harassing him as well, bodies collide in the near corner. And now to Goodfellow, his shot goes off the back of a leg. Here comes Waterman all by himself. Now he's the only man alongside three Indiana skaters. Pushed away by Kicker to eliminate the danger. Puck sliding past the right circle. A shot through traffic, kicked away by McCaskey. Did well to see that from long range. Kicker has his eyes up and plays it high into the air over to Chambers who avoids a hit. Trying to play the puck through, but Waterman comes in and makes his presence known. Puck flicked the other way now behind Hockenberry. He's trying to command his defenseman. As Herrick sets up an attack for St. Louis. Over to Waterman now. A poke check is successful by McKay. He deeks and dangles around one defenseman for St. Louis and throws it forward. A centering pass, but no one's home. St. Louis takes over possession easily. Indiana trying to push skaters forward, but the puck goes all the way across and an icing is called as Cesarski meets it at the goal line. 13 and 11 seconds to go here in the third. And we've got a tie game, Garrett. It's really evened out here in the third period as well. Indiana currently up two to one in hits, but St. Louis four to three in shots. Both the numbers are pretty close. That goal scored was by Jeffrey Au, and the assist will be officially credited to Charlie West. Face off one by Indiana. De Lorenzo, a wrist shot, jamming at it in front. There's Brandenburg back at it. He tries to find another centering pass. Cesarski, a wrist shot, goes high off the bar just barely. Puck sails all the way across, and Indiana has earned themselves another icing face off in the attacking third of the sheet. 
Just a few ticks under 13 to play. Garrett, not much separating these two teams on the scoreboard. The hits, though, and the faceoffs are really where the game has been won or lost. Yeah, St. Louis has done better in the faceoff circle this period, but Indiana has, still has a slight edge. Indiana playing around. Here's Michelli dancing outside the left circle. Cesarski gets shot through traffic, gets swallowed up and stick to the chest protector of Hockenberry. Again, he's had some tough shots to endure in the past 25 minutes or so. Indiana starting to put the pressure on here. At the beginning of the period, they came out a little sluggish, it appeared, but now, now that the game's tied, they're all aware of the situation and they're trying to get a goal. Looking at St. Louis's bench, it is a very thin piece of pine. Several guys appear to be missing. That's on top of the guys that they already had gone due to fraternity organization events. And now a quick shot thrown on. Hockenberry absorbs the contact and stops play with 12 and a half to go. And Garrett, they've only got eight different skaters on the bench for St. Louis, whereas Indiana's got pretty much a full roster. And that makes it tough on a team, especially in the final five minutes of the game. Indiana going to have an energy advantage there. On a rush the opposite way, here's Charlie West moving in, jumping around Timmons, pushing the puck forward. DiLorenzo smacks it off the boards and has a rush the other way. Odd man rush. Here comes Michelle along with D'Lo. Pushed away. Brandenburg thinks about chipping it off the glass and then does high into the air and into the netting, says the linesman. So play has been stopped with 12.03 to go here in the third. Indiana's leading goal scorer, Jack Kissel, with eight tucks and ten apples, has been held off the goal column so far this afternoon and evening. His ice time has been a little limited in this one. He did spend some time in the box earlier. Here's St. Louis trying to set up an attack in the forward third for them. The blue sweaters of the Billikens jamming for the puck. Now Jeremy scoops it up and will carry it through the circle. Moving forward, a little bit of a stick lift, finally wobbling back toward Jeremy. He's by himself on the rush now. Four on three. No throws a shot through traffic and then hits a man. Kissel, who we just talked about, nearly got a goal, but he was pushed forward. No thought about a hit, but instead takes the puck. Cesarski waits, now knocks it through over the leg of Kissel, who lays chase. Indiana and St. Louis both getting Five new out onto the ice. Here's Kissel at the left dot. Leaves it for Kenyon. Kenyon moves around, thinking about a shot. Passing right in front, and Kissel gets hit hard from behind. No call, but that was as close as it gets to Kissel putting one up on the board. That was a golden opportunity right there, Sam. Speaking of golden opportunities, Cesarski plays it off the skates of Arthur Sosin. And Indiana will have to figure out how to get it out of their own side. A quick pass, and a body collides. Travis Herrick went down onto his knee. More hitting Garrett, as we expected. Indiana will try to outlast St. Louis here. McKay songs at the puck and then plays it forward to O'Flaherty. Kenyon moving along the blue line, but Herrick again has it. He flips it forward, intercepted out of the air by Cesarski. Cesarski long chip into the zone so he can get a change on his Timmons and Brennan. Hard hit as Vladislav Krush goes onto his Wallet again. He's looking for a call, but St. Louis is emerging with an attack. Onto the near side corner, that's Joey Callahan. He gets thrown around and finally loses an edge. Centering pass, doesn't find a stick blade, and another shot from the right circle gets swallowed up by McCaskey. We are through 10 and two seconds here in the third, Garrett. Yeah, at the other end of the ice, it looked like Krush got a stick through the blade, well, through the opening above the blade of his skates, rather, but the referees didn't see it, unfortunately, for Indiana. So a face-off will resume the play to the stick side of McCaskey. Indiana hemmed in their own zone. Face-off won by Offenbach. He carries it around the end zone. Played all the way forward off of the stick of Simino who forces Hockenberry to make a save lunging out of the crease. So just like that, Indiana has a face-off in the St. Louis third. 
We're down to the final 10 minutes to go in this one, unless we have overtime. The last time Indiana was in an overtime contest, they won in a shootout against Louisville right here at the Frank on a Friday night, much like this one. Offenbach pushes the puck against the yellow boards on the near side. Puck floats through neutral territory over to Kicker, who plays pitch and catch with Goody. Another pass forward, glancing off Simino's stick. He lays chase, now gets to the end zone first and swings his stick wildly at the puck and then gives another shove to a skater in a blue sweater for good measure. Offenbach, another stick lift and a hit narrowly avoided by Jeffrey Au. Nine and a half to go in regulation. Indiana and St. Louis squared up at four apiece. Goodfellow pins out of the boards, trying to hold on to him. Now Offenbach comes around poking at the puck, jamming it, and yanks it away. Kicker avoiding some hits, and now moves across the center circle. Here he is at the left circle, over toward the goal line. He tries a quick shot right in front. Another shot from the high slot by McKay. He gets kicked away. DiLorenzo on a shot, gets kicked away. My goodness, two good efforts for Indiana back-to-back -back and two great saves. Cesarski swinging his stick blade at the puck, trying to keep it in the blue line. He does. Here's Jeremy dancing around the circle. Leaves it for Michelli as he gets thrown down to the ice. Michelli still trying to make something happen, but does a little bit too much. And McKay comes to the near side. A quick, wild shot by DiLorenzo. Flew up in the air as if he'd fouled a pitch off in baseball. Didn't even make it to the glass. It was high in the air and arcing as play has been stopped. Yeah, it looked like D'Lo got under that puck and scooped it up into the air. A five iron from close range, Garrett. They're going to go crazy when he hits this one. Face off to the glove side of Hockenberry. Indiana in the attacking zone. Cesarski holds the right point. Let's Jeremy come get it, and then he's thrown into the boards. DiLorenzo throws a shoulder into a man. Now to McKay working the blue line in the middle of it. He gets sent down, and now it's Cesarski all by himself. Brandenburg comes back to help out, and the shot never finds the net. It, sends, it was sent high into the ceiling to stop play with 7.48 remaining in period number three. Seven forty-eight to go here. Indiana has been putting the pressure on here these past couple minutes. They got to continue to as they win the faceoff here. They got a chance. Kissel getting harassed in front of the St. Louis bench, and then he has his head put in a headlock. Some serious physical play, and now Kissel gets thrown down. We're gonna have a stoppage in play. The whistle will have to be blown sooner rather than later, as they're doing WWE moves to each other. Finally, play has been halted, and Kissel was in a no holds barred altercation just outside the right circle, Garrett. My goodness. He was frustrated because Kissel was put in a headlock first and then thrown down onto his backside and his head slammed against the ice. And Kissel retaliated, trying to get the man off of him. And then he picked his leg up and tried to twirl him like a wrestling move, Garrett. And this is not a good time to be down a man if you're Indiana. Seven and a half to go in this yeah. game. One goal could win the game for you. It's the weird wacky bounces that sometimes win. Here comes Simino taking it against Jeffrey Au at the right circle. St. Louis holds on to it, but a diving Simino pushes the puck free. It'll be a two-minute minor with Kissel in the box, despite his cheering section over to our right in the student area, complaining mighty about that one. A long slap shot by, from O'Flaherty gets waffle boarded away. 1.30 to go, and almost a shorthanded opportunity for Indiana. Here comes St. Louis quarterbacking the offense on the far side. That's Penberthy. Onto the near side to Travis Herrick. He plays it toward the corner, and Simino backhand shovels it away. Almost half the penalty gone. Indiana getting four new guys onto the ice as St. Louis reloads. Cruising down the ice. Here's Charlie West. He moves uncontested. Finally, a stick check sends the puck all the way across, and Hockenberry plays it to Corker. Corker circling around. 60 seconds have elapsed on this five-minute minute five minute minor, two-minute minor, pardon me. Here comes Brandenburg at the left dot. Gets pinned against the boards. Offenbach enters, trying to yank the puck away. 
Now over toward the stick of Travis Herrick. Herrick looking at his options, surveying the scene. 40 seconds to go on the power play for the Billikens. Cesarski lunging at the puck, and now McKay has to hold on to it. Finally, the puck, no, it stayed on top of the blue line, and the Billikens still have possession. A, a shot from West goes into the leg of Cesarski. No one knows where the puck is. It bounced off several different legs right along the goal line. Another shot from long range, kicked away. McKay lunges at it. A good poke check away by McCaskey moving out of the crease. Brandenburg trying to move it all the way out, but it's caught out of the air. Corker slap shot, bounces off the back of the cage. Here come McKay and Simino finally relieving the Indiana skaters, and that will do it for the penalty. Indiana back to five aside against the Billikens. That's a big kill right there. 5.25 to go, and just like that, we've got an icing on the right side. So Indiana will get a face-off in the attacking zone. And Gary, you have to think, if they're going to hem St. Louis in their own zone, it's got to be now. They're running out of time. Obviously, with a game tomorrow, you want to avoid overtime if you can. Try to get as much recovery time as needed, but it all comes down to this. Jeremy and Au taking the face off at the left dot to the stick side of Hockenberry. St. Louis has an odd man rush, three on one. Timmons back skating. Here comes a quick shot, kicked away, and they score. Waterman takes the deflection off of a Penberthy wrist shot. And just like that, St. Louis grabs the lead right out of thin air. Five to four with 5.18 to go here in the third. And the Indiana faithful are stunned right now. Just when we were talking about how Indiana had to take advantage of the faceoff, St. Louis is able to win it in their own zone and find a breakout pass all the way to the other end, and they take a 5-4 lead. That's gut-wrenching right there. This will be a measuring stick game for Indiana to see how they can perform when they really have to get a goal late in games. Most of the victories they've had have been multi-goal margins, even to the very end. Five and change to go, Indiana. Needs to put something back up on the board and no, gets sent down hard. Another good push by Kissel. He gets a little bit of retaliation. Kicker gains the zone over toward the goal line. A shot from point blank. Pushed away and then fallen upon by Hockenberry to stop play. Ten seconds under five to go, Garrett. And that was one of those golden opportunities that we were looking for. Face off, Indiana's attacking side, a long wrist shot thrown on by Kicker. Wobbling all the way across, rolling end over end, scooped up by Goodfellow, swinging around the cage. McCaskey keeping his eyes open and staying on his edges. Battling forward in the near boards, that's Brad Tergelian. Jeremy moving around, nearly gets tripped up, and then gives possession easily over to an opponent before No can get it back to him. Jeremy on a rush by himself, gets pushed from behind. Null tries to scoop the puck up. It wobbles in toward the crease and right over the stick of Cesarski with 4.20 to go here in the game. Indiana trailing. They're going to have to mount an attack here. They got a quick change here on the rush. Here's Cesarski. He's over at the left side. And in front of the left circle, a deflection goes over toward Cruz. Another quick shot. Finally, Hockenberry holds on to it. Under four minutes to go. Indiana still trailing by a tally. Body language is everything in a situation like this, Garrett. And it looks like there's some deep breaths coming from everybody on the ice in a blue sweater. <laughs> Face off won by St. Louis in their own end. They do well to scoop it away. Callahan chips it off the scorer's table. McKay sliding around, harassed in front of his own net, finally pushing it off the boards. That's Cesarski who goes down onto his shin protectors. And O'Flaherty playing it forward. More big hits as Cesarski gets the pitch and catch. Playing it forward toward Kenyon at the left circle. He's in toward the hash mark. Cesarski lines a wrist shot up. It's kicked wide. Still playing with it in the far corner. There's Cruz who throws his hip into a man. That's Al again absorbing contact. Three and a quarter to go here in the third. The puck goes high into the ceiling and knocks the lighting fixture that is swinging around a little bit right above some of the spectators. 3.15 to go in regulation, Garrett, hopefully. 
Coach Weiss got to be telling his guys right now it's all out attack. It's now or nothing, and we're going to see McCaskey going to the bench here soon. Indiana finally gets possession after the faceoff. A quick shot from close range right over the bar. Michelli trying to move over toward it. Now he gets it from kicker into the far corner. Michelli circling around, keeps his eyes up, looking for options, but it's pushed away. Kicker goes down onto two knees to block it. Gains possession for Indiana, but seeds the blue line. Here's DiLorenzo by himself. He gets tripped up from behind, and we'll have a delayed call. Indiana is going to have a power play with 2.46 to go here in the third, and we could perhaps see a six on four, Garrett, if McCaskey is asked to vacate the crease. They'll probably give them a minute here on the power play to try to get something going, but if they're still trailing, they'll probably pull McCaskey around 1.30, I'd say. Out on the ice during this power play for Indiana. Kenyon, Kissel, Kicker, McDonald, Krush. And now Goodfellow, as Kicker thought that they were going to pull the goalie right away, Kicker races back over to the bench to avoid a too many men penalty. Here comes McDonald trying to win the faceoff, but instead doing the deed is Turgelian. St. Louis holding on to it on the far boards. And Kissel yanks it free, prying it off. Turgelian, he dances around, moving behind the cage. To Kenyon at the left point, over toward the right side. Backhanded pass by Goodfellow, and the puck rolls over the blue line. 1.35 to go here on the power play. Indiana has a five on four. Goodfellow moving forward, avoids a big hit, cruising through the slot, over toward the right circle. McDonald tries to throw it on. A quick shot, and Kitzel scores! Kitzel knocked it out of the air! And it's all tied up with two and change to go. The cheering section for Jack Kissel, the Indiana leading scorer, rushes over to bang the boards in front of him. And we're at five aside on the ice and on the scoreboard with 2.09 to go. Garrett, what an incredible finish from out of midair by Jack Kissel. Well, that's about as good as hand eye coordination as you're going to see in college hockey. Kissel. It already got deflected once, and then he was able to hit it out of midair to tie things up at five. Nine goals on the season for Jack Kissel. Here comes Kenyon lunging at the puck, moving into the near corner. It wobbles forward over toward O'Flaherty, working the goal line to the opposite side. Moving along to the center circle, over to McKay. His shot from close range, deflected by Kenyon and away. Under two to go. Indiana has St. Louis hemmed in their own zone. Here comes McKay sliding it back towards Cesarski, a wrist shot. Absorbed by the legs and thighs of Hockenberry. 140 remaining here in the third. And I don't know if that pass missed the stick of Kenyon in the slot right there, but it looked like he had a wide open net to shoot at. Several times we've seen Indiana all by themselves on the back side of the play, on the soft side, the weak side, and unable to make the right deflection. Off the face off, the puck bounces high into the air, and St. Louis moves away with it. Here's Herrick, he gets face planted into the boards and Indiana fans cheering plenty. Kenyon chips it back toward Jeremy, moving the opposite direction. And then Herrick doing him a disservice, moving it to the opposite side. Again, it's Nolan Meyer chipping it off the glass on the near boards and McKay moving behind the cage. 69 seconds to go, five of five is the score. O'Flaherty getting smacked around before Cesarski plays it forward to DiLorenzo. Indiana circling the wagons, wagons to regroup. Under a minute to play, here's Cesarski dancing around with it toward Michelli. He'll retreat back into the zone before Goodfellow can chip it forward. 40 seconds to go. Again over toward Nolan Meyer. Puck bounces up off the chest of Herrick and DiLorenzo. They're whacking at it fiercely. 40 seconds to go, tie game of five apiece. Brandenburg re-enters the zone after the puck had an over and back. Now all the way to the Indiana blue line and Michelli at the left point. He's entering the zone, working the half boards, the half dashers if you will. Kicker paying the price to go get the puck. Brandenburg working the back side of the netting. Kicker plays it in front, a quick deflection. Michelli gets sent down hard. We're gonna get an icing here. 12.4 to go on the clock, Indiana will have what appears to be one major last chance to break the deadlock. Otherwise, we're headed to three-on-three -three overtime for five minutes, Garrett. 
Indiana, as we mentioned, 1-0 in games that go past regulation. They've failed to score in overtime, but so have their opponents. Face off with 12 to go to the glove side of Hockenberry, who takes that deflection all the way into his leather and holds on to it, so we'll reload the horses in the chute and do it all over again. Indiana's had 13 shots this period. They really went to the aggression when they were down and they found a way to tie it, and now they're playing for the win with nine seconds left. Brandenburg stepping into the dot alongside Waterman. Waterman very familiar with this Indiana team. He played at Zionsville High School alongside Nathan Chinney and Alex Shabazz. Looks like a timeout's been taken by Coach Andrew Weiss in his fifth game at the helm after taking over as the interim head coach in the middle of the season. So Indiana will try to draw up something to net them one more and light the lamp for a final time. We'll take a quick break, as will the players. This is Club Ice Hockey at Indiana University on the Indiana Hockey Broadcast Network. We're back at it, nine ticks left on the big board. Five, five the score, St. Louis and Indiana all tied up. A goal that appeared to be scored by Jack Kissel has been credited temporarily to Drew Michelli. Nevertheless, the face off won by Indiana. Cesarski throws a wrist shot high and wide, bounces off the glass. McKay tries to pull the puck off the wall, but instead it's pinned up. The clock will elapse, and we've got triple zeros, but matching numbers on the home and guest scoreboards. So we'll head to an overtime period. We expect it to be three on three for five minutes, Garrett, although as this is not a TSEHL game, the coaches may agree to do something different. They could go straight to a shootout if they want to. Well, Indiana undefeated in shootouts, but they don't have Sammy Billis back there tonight. McCaskey has stood strong. But they do have Jack Knoll. <laughs> That's all you need. Null, the first shooter in that shootout against Louisville. He netted a top shelf bottle rocket, as did DiLorenzo. Garrett, if there's anything that stood out to you in that final 20 minutes, what was it? The aggression really stepped up. St. Louis came out and really punched Indiana in the mouth, and they had to find out, they had to figure out how they were gonna handle it. It took them a while. They actually didn't end up tying the game until about three minutes left, but here we are tied up five to five, and it looks like we're gonna get a five minute overtime period. Five minutes up on the big board. St. Louis coming in off of an overtime, a shootout win against Maryville. They won seven to six and two to zero in the shootout. <laughs> so both teams are undefeated in play after regulation. It will be three aside for Indiana in white sweaters from left to right. Cesarski, McDonald, and Jeremy. On Here the opposite go. side of the sheet, it'll be Corker, Ow, and West. In the blue sweaters, the Billigans trying to push the puck forward. Cesarski moving around, played to the far side, over to McDonald, thinks about playing it forward to Cesarski, now he does. A quick rush in front, a chip off the back of the netminder, he holds onto it somehow and stands his ground, stopping play. Just 15 seconds have been elapsed. 15 seconds have elapsed, pardon me, Garrett, here in this overtime period. I gotta get to a better angle for this. Jeremy steps into the left dot and pushes it clear over to Cesarski. His shot smacks off the backside of two different players and then thrown hard into the boards is McDonald. Cesarski works the blue line. A quick deflection shot, finds no one in particular. Now toilet bowl all the way around, a quick mi miscommunication as Jeffrey Ow was not expecting that pass. 
Charlie West playing it back, more pitch and catch. Passing lane up to Corker has been blocked twice. Finally, over toward the stick of Cesarski. He gets hit from behind. Al holds it against the boards. Tucked right near the far board. And McCaskey nearly gave up the overtime goal. We're through one full minute. Jeremy lets it bounce off the top of his stick. And it will be icing with four minutes exactly. So we've played one full minute in this overtime period. And Garrett, it looks pretty even. A couple rushes either way. McCaskey stood his ground and put his leg out. And on the other side, Cesarski had it at about the one foot line. Yeah, and I'm not too sure about that icing that they just called. It looked like a few of the Indiana players were questioning as well. And now the pressure's on McCaskey with the puck in his own zone. McCaskey spreading his legs apart as Jeremy wins the faceoff. Cesarski pulls it free. Threads the pass forward, a stretch pass all the way to McDonald, the left circle. Shoots and it's knocked away by the glove of Hockenberry. What a marvelous save as the puck heads all the way across the sheet again. Jeremy carrying it away from danger and knocking it back to Cesarski in the far corner. Another stretch pass. This time Kenyon's out on the ice. Moving over toward the slot. Let Cesarski get off before making a play. Now it's Goodfellow and O'Flaherty out on the ice. Here's Kenyon working behind down low to O'Flaherty in the high slot. Thinks about it now to Goodfellow. Played into traffic and through traffic safely. O'Flaherty scoops it up in the far corner. Indiana having a sustained time on attack here as the puck is sent the width of the neutral zone over toward the stick of Nolan Meyer. Aiden Penberthy, the only one near it in the near corner. He gets pushed hard up against the boards by Kenyon who squeezes them up against the glass. Goodfellow rushing in to try and help out. We're through two full minutes here in the overtime period. 5-5 five, five is the score. Finally, Cruz trying to yank the puck free, but he's unsuccessful. Now it is free. Over to Penberthy, he sh shoots from a sharp angle. O'Flaherty dumps it back toward Goodfellow, who in turn knocks it to Kenyon. Kenyon gets dispossessed, and a quick shovel pass over toward O'Flaherty at the right side. Tries to work around. He gets tangled up and brought down. No arms are in the air, so play will continue. To Cesarski, he steps in front of the pass. Trying to shoot it from close range, and it goes high into the air. A deflection now over to DiLorenzo, but the stick runs, the, pardon me, the puck runs past his stick. 2.12 to go here in overtime. Michelli stomps on top of the puck and pulls it forward over to DiLorenzo. He moves and threads the needle through the defenseman. Gets pushed down from behind and dispossessed. Crowd getting into it. We're down to 120 seconds. Circling the wagons is Charlie West, playing it forward to Jeremy Au. Ow over to Corker, who nearly gets hit. Here's Corker at the right side. A quick shot from in close, and McCaskey made what appeared to be a paddle save. 1.45 to go. Indiana just got away with murder. Wow, they had McCaskey down right there, too. They had Indiana dead to rights. Here's a quick pass on the change. Michelli at the left side, looking for his options. Pushes forward, and it's off a of body and away. Cesarski digs in and digs it out. To DiLorenzo, a wrist shot. Off the back side of the cage, Michelli jamming at it. We're down to 120 to play. Nothing separating these sides through 63 minutes. McDonald tries to get it home right in front of the cage and he's unsuccessful. Cesarski back skating, but Michelli's able to beat his man to the puck. Penn Berthy flips it forward. Indiana trying to get a change, but will not be allowed to do so. Here's Charlie West at the left circle. Cesarski holds his stick and makes sure he can't get a shot off. Another quick bounce right in front of the cage. And a deflection goes over to Waterman. 60 seconds to go, a sharp angle shot. Yanked away by Cesarski. Holds on to it, trying to give his guys an opportunity to change, but they won't do so. Now we have an icing called. Pardon me, that was offside as the linesman on the near side had his hand up in the air. So with 39 seconds to go, and these teams all tied up at five, a faceoff will come right in front of the Indiana fans with a big chance to take control. It looks like they're not gonna let Indiana change right here. Well, Michelli ran onto the puck. Or I guess that they just kicked Tommy McDonald out. Well, from what we can gather, McDonald has been assessed a game misconduct. We're not quite sure what for yet. But he has opened the side gate and stumbles onto the padded floor 
although now he's stepping back onto the ice. Garrett, we're going to have to wait for some sort of hand signal from the far side as we're not quite sure what's going on. Well, McDonald will have an early shower, and his compatriots will have 40 seconds to make something happen, lest a shootout follow. We'll take a quick break and try to sort all this out. This is Club Ice Hockey at Indiana University on the Indiana Hockey Broadcast Network. Overtime, 40 seconds to go. So after much ado, Indiana will be down a skater. It's a five minute major assessed to Tommy McDonald, served by Michelli, the face off in front of McCaskey. St. Louis trying to make something happen with much time expired already and they score on the backside. It looks like it's Waterman getting mobbed by his teammates, taking the rebound on the backside. McCaskey sitting down distraught and Indiana right off the face off after Tommy McDonald, we have to assume, ran his mouth at the official and earned himself a major penalty. Indiana gives up the overtime winner. Six to five, the final score from the Frank in game one of this two game series. We'll be back here tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. for the rubber match of this two game series. And as handshakes take place at center ice, Indiana falling to 10, six and 0 on the season and St. Louis extending their win streak to three and now standing at 6-12-0 overall. Yeah, just an unfortunate way to close this game out. You can't go down a man in overtime. Only bad things happen when you do that to yourself. McDonald takes the penalty with like 35 seconds left in the game and then St. Louis scores right after. A tough loss for the cream and crimson skaters out onto the ice. We'll take a quick look at the final scores and tallies and count everything up in the post-game show. Alongside Garrett Drake and Ben Standard, I'm Sam Wexler. So six to five, the final score.